Hey there everyone, I am Vicki Howell and this is Ask Me Monday and I'm here from my studio in Austin, Texas as I am three Mondays a month at noon central to start out your week creatively. So if you are watching later, if you're watching a replay um, and you also don't like to be in on the chit chat, what I like to do is I like to um, get to know you a little bit better. I like to hear about what you're making and where you're from and that kind of thing. But if you're watching later and you're really only here for the Tunisian crochet um, tutorial, then just fast forward until you see my hands working. Maybe do that instead of posting about how you don't like my babbling. Please, thank you, salutations. All right, so um, it's been a couple weeks uh, since I have been here. I went on a vacation, um, had a great time with... Um, our dear, dear friends, we did Santa Fe and Arizona and a bunch of places in between, um, spent some time crafting. Um, so I would love to hear about what you make when you're on road trips. So it doesn't have to be like the epic drive, you know, cross straight states like we did, even if it's just every time you're in the car and someone else is driving. But I'd love to know what you work, what you work on. Um, do you bring knitting? Do you bring cro crochet? Do you bring embroidery? I actually worked on, actually me and my friend, um, we both worked on, Kristen, we both worked on this, making these Bargello uh, sunglass cases, but I have promised Brett Barra that I will not show you until she launches the kits at Hello Bargello within the next week or so. So um, if you don't already follow me on Instagram, it's at Vicki Hell, and I'll post a picture there. All right, so I also would love to hear where you're watching from. If you see somebody in your same neck of the woods, please say hi to them, reach out. I love to see when people meet each other and maybe get together in, in real life um, from the boards of Ask Me Monday. I also, if you haven't taken a road trip lately, um, and just want to tell me what you worked on over the weekend. I, I'm a strong believer that when you have a little downtime, it's really important that you take a few moments to fill that creative well, whether it's, you know, baking or knitting or painting or sewing or whatever, you know, pottery, music, whatever it is, um, you should do it for yourself. Schedule some time in it. All right, over the weekend, I finally, finally finished this top. So this is... Um, Oh man, I should have I should have looked at this before I I went live. This is a top from Pom Pom Quarterly. It's from an issue I believe in 2015, and they actually shot it here in Austin. And we gave away the issue when I hosted the knitting event at South by Southwest earlier this year. So I started it a long time ago. I don't get a lot of time to knit for myself, and I never knit myself sweaters. All right, this is a top, but I just I don't like how they look at me. Look at me. Freud, uh, how they look on me normally, and it's also so hot here, and I, as you know, I like quick projects. But this one just kind of spoke to me, and I, I'm actually really happy with it. Um, because it's black, um, I'll wear it all the time. In my regular life, I actually just prefer wearing, you know, black and gray and olive, um, but I don't do it as much on camera because it doesn't read as well, um, but I'm really happy with it. So um, I'll put a link to what the pattern is in the comment section of this video after we're done. I think it's called the Talavera top, but I can't remember who the designer is. And I wanna make sure that she gets credited. So I finished that. I also uh, made the project that we're going to be talking about today, which I'll show you in a second. And I also um, unboxed, which you might've seen on Instagram or Facebook um, stories, this. So, an advanced copy of my 13th book, The Knit Vibe, A Knitter's Guide to Creati Creativity, Community, and Well-Being for the Mind, Body, and Soul is out in October. This is just an advanced copy. I apologize that it's backwards. It's because I'm using my forward-facing camera and I'm live. Um, but I'm just so excited about it. It's different than anything that I've ever done before. Of course, there are projects, but there's also really in-depth articles and essays, um, intros to designers, talks of community, tri triumphing over adversity, um, articles of inclusion, you know, um, a lot of stuff about focusing on our mental and physical health, how we use creativity to connect to our higher selves or whatever our spirituality is. Um, and then there are, of course, you know, go-to gifts and, you know, all of the things. Anyways, I'm really excited about it. Uh, again, it comes out in October. You can pre-order it now on Amazon if you want. It is a big, juicy book with beautiful photographs, so it's lovely just sitting on the coffee table. Um, yoga, 
physical health, mental health, all of the things. So that was my big excitement for the weekend. I also um, had intended to do a bunch of sewing, but then I just recently discovered that I'm a puzzle person. Who knew? Not me. I always assumed I'd think they were boring, but um, my friend Kristen bought a feminist puzzle while we were in Santa Fe, and we ended up totally zoning out on it, so then I got a Stranger Things puzzle to do with my daughter. She really just wanted to DJ the music while we, while uh, my oldest son Tanner and I worked on it this weekend, but I found like it was something I could channel my energy in that wasn't work. So I didn't sew, but I did have a relaxing time and we finished the puzzle. All right, I am blabbering. So what we're going to talk about today is... Tunisian crochet. This episode is brought to you by Knitter's Pride or Knit Pro if you are out of North America. And they sent me this amazing set. So you know how almost every week I talk about the Ginger um, Interchangeable Knitting Needle set. Well, I just got, on Friday, I just got this set. Um, this is their Tunisian crochet set. So it's exactly the same as far as quality and sheen and ease of use as the interchangeable knitting set. So if you like that and are interested um, in Tunisian crochet, I highly, um, I highly recommend checking it out. Uh, let me just go over for people that don't know what Tunisian crochet um, looks like. Well, I'll show you that in a second. But it's kind of a combination. It usually gives a woven look. The hook looks like a crochet hook, except for it either has a cord attached or you can attach one um, yourself. So why you would want interchangeable other than, you know, size hooks is also different length cords. So I'm not going to use the key because it'll take me a little bit longer, but you would just attach whatever length cord. If you're making something wide, like a shawl or a blanket, you'd want a longer cord. So you attach the cord and then you attach in the exact same way they just screw on, they there's a little stopper. And this is going to be the thing that stops the stitches from sliding off your cord. Um, and so this is a super long one because I have all the short ones in use right now. So if I was gonna be making a blanket or a baby blanket or something like that, or maybe a shawl, um, I'd want a cord this long. I, you would not need a cord this long if you're just making something like a scarf. But the other thing that I like about the set is that the needle, the tip of the needle is really pointy. And you'll see why that's really helpful when I turn around and show you, turn the camera around rather, and show you how it is done. So this is just really fun. Um, I have done Tunisian crochet a couple times before on Ask Me Monday, um, but I have not ever done the honeycomb stitch. Now, some of you might remember the last episode that I did a couple weeks ago, I did honeycomb stitch with t-shirt yarn, but it was, the, it was the knit version. This is Tunisian crochet. And so I designed this pillow and the pattern for this pillow is up for free, courtesy of Knitter's Pride um, at vickihowell.com. So I'm gonna show you how to do this stitch pattern to create it. And once you know how to do um, you know, all the steps for that, you'll be able to make this pillow should you choose to. This was a really fast project. I made it, like I said, I got the hooks on Friday. I think I made it Saturday, like the whole thing Saturday maybe. It was, it's really fast. Um, this is a this is a super bulky yarn um, and I worked on a size 15. I usually with Tunisian crochet go up a hook size, um, go up millimeters wise, one size of what the recommendation is on the label because it tends to be a little more woven, which makes it tighter. Now, if you wanted something that was really structurally sound, if you were making a basket or something like that, you wouldn't need to do this. This is just if you want a little give. Um, okay, so I am going to flip the camera around and show you what all of the steps are to make this stitch. I also just realized I have not said hello to people. Hi, Katya, um, Denise, good to see you. Chris, always great to see you. Noah, so nice to see you. Um, I've missed where everybody is uh, watching from and what you've made, but I will go back after and uh, look at the comment section. If you have any recommendations for maybe other projects using this stitch or you wanna share links to what you made over the weekend, please do that in the comment section. I really love when you guys turn the comment section into a community boards. All right, I'm gonna turn it around. It's never pretty, but I'm doing it anyway. Okay, ready? And let's do it. Okay, so I put down some white paper just because I wanted to make sure that it was easier for you to see. And of course, now my camera's 
not working. Um, okay, so the first step is you are going to need to chain the amount that's called for in the pattern, which is 35, but or whatever any multiple of two. If you can bear with me for a second, you're going to see something funny. I have to tighten this camera. It's not going to be pretty, but that's what we're doing. I swear I did this before, but this is this is how you know it's live, right? Okay, so for this stitch pattern you do, if you were working in the round, you would do multiples. Uh, well, you could do multiples of two regardless. Um, for the pattern, for the pillow, I did an, an odd number because I wanted to have a bookend of the same stitch on either. So, but normally this only takes um, a, an even number of stitches. So the first thing that you're gonna do is a regular crochet chain, just like you normally would if you were doing working in traditional crochet. So from here, oh, and if you need a refresher on single crochet, you can just go to my YouTube channel, which is just my name, and I have a whole like crochet school of basics. All right, so from here, what we're going to be doing, and now you'll see the reason for a cord. Every round or every row of stitches in Tunisian crochet is always worked in a forward and backward pass. So it kind of seems like you're doing two rows, but it really only counts as one. In any project that you start, I don't like to use absolutes, but all that I can think of, you're always going to start in this manner, creating a foundation row. So to do that, you need to pick up loops for every stitch. So this one counts as your first one. And to pick up the loops, you're just going to insert, yarn over, and pull it up. Now, if you're a crocheter already, your instinct is going to be able to keep working it. You do not. All you want is the loop picked up. And you'll do that all the way across. So you can see that as you're loading the stitches, now I only chained, you know, a very small amount of stitches just so you wouldn't have to sit here for five minutes and watch me pick up all these loops. But if I had chained a, whoops, and when you split the when you split the stitch on accident like I just did, just pull it out like that and then reinsert and pull it through. Um, if I were doing the number of stitches that were required for the pillow, it would the stitches could potentially go way past the hook and would need a place to be held. And that's what the, car, the cord's for. It's for the forward pass when you have all of the stitches um, loaded up. All right. Oh, Cheryl says she's so into this. I, I'm really happy to um, really happy to hear that. Okay, now from here, and again, this is how you're going to start any project anywhere, not just the pillow that I'm talking about. You are going to need to chain one. So this is kind of the reverse of if you were doing traditional crochet, you always chain one at the beginning. This one's always at the um, at the end of the forward pass or the beginning of the backward pass, however you want to think about it. Hi, Allison from Scotland. So nice to have you here. So you want to chain one. And all that is doing is creating that height, just like it would in regular crochet. All right, from here, no matter what stitch you're doing um, in Tunisian crochet, the backward pass almost always looks exactly like this. So after we've chained one, we don't ever do that again. We are going to work by yarning over and pulling through two loops. And then we repeat that process all the way across. So yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And you'll just keep doing that all the way to the end until you're finished. And you'll get something that looks like this. That was messy, that transition. Okay, so as you can see here, what the setup row does is really gives you a clear area of work for where you're going to be inserting your needle or your hook rather, which are these downward bars. So you do not work into this first stitch. That doesn't count as, as one that you work. From here for the honeycomb stitch, we are going to be working, alternating every other stitch between a Tunisian stitch 
purl and a Tunisian simple stitch back and forth. So to start, we do a Tunisian uh, purl. So that means that we bring the yarn forward as we would if we were purling and knitting. So this is kind of a, it's a combination of crochet and knitting. Now you'll see you get this little scarf. You want to just take your thumb and push it down, yarn over, and pull through that one loop. And that is your Tunisian pearl. And you can see it looks remarkably like a knit pearl, right? Okay, so then the next stitch is going to be Tunisian simple stitch. So you move your yarn back, you insert in the bar, yarn over, pull through. And you can see how that looks, that stitch looks different. These long bars from the simple stitch alternating are creating sort of your honeycomb. Um, they're really kind of like um, pentagonal um, shapes. All right, so all you do need to do is just continue that pattern all the way to the end. So to refresh, bring the yarn forward for a Tunisian pearl insert. Make sure that little scarf stays down there or you yarn over and pull through. Tunisian simple stitch, insert, yarn over, pull through. And you'll just do that all the way to the end. And then once, once you get to the end, you will work the backwards past the exact same way, chaining one and then yarn, yarning over and going to two, two, through two stitches all the way back. And that will count as one row. All right, so after you've done that, this this pattern is actually created out of two rows, which would be four total passes, because remember there's two passes per row, by alternating. So we started with a Tunisian pearl and went to a, a simple stitch on the row below. So this time we're going to alternate and start with a simple stitch and then move to a Tunisian pearl. So this color is a little darker, so I'm going to bring it closer. And these are all my color collection from... Um, uh, Valley Yarns Super Bulky Super Wash, which you can find at yarn.com. Okay, so for a simple stitch, again, we're not uh, we're not working this first loop. That's already taken care of here. So we just start simple stitch, Tunisian pearl, simple stitch, Tunisian pearl. So exactly the same thing, you just changed how you're alternating. And you just continue those rows for as long as you want for the piece to be as big as you want. This pillow that I made, let me see if I can back up for a minute a little bit, is a 16 inch square, so pretty standard. I did stripes on the back, I did a solid, so you can see what it looks like. It's really beautiful, just in a solid even. Um, and, um, I just changed colors the exact same way you would change colors in, in knitting, just laying it over and starting again. Super easy um, and, you know, kind of fun, different, shakes it up a little bit. All right, I'm going to turn the camera around so that we can wrap. All right, so that's it. A little something. There's nothing like putting your hand up so everybody can see it when you, uh, just a little something different this week, which I, you know, I really enjoy. I like doing all of the needle crafts. So anytime I get a new tool, um, I love to play it with it. And I just am so thrilled with the um, ginger set. I, I've had a lot of fun kind of switching out different size hooks just to see what worked better for the drape. If you were going to use this stitch for a top, which you absolutely could, and maybe with a lighter weight yarn, unless you want a heavy sweater, I might go up two size needles so that I get a really nice drape. That's when it's really great to have an interchangeable set because then you don't have to go out and buy multiples. So um, you can find this wherever Knitter's Pride products are sold. Um, I think that it's around the same price as the knitting needle set. So check it out. It's a good investment if you are into Tunisian crochet. And I think you might be after this. Um, if you're interested in other Tunisian projects, uh, please look back. You can go to the playlist on my Facebook page, which is, uh, you just click on videos and there's Ask Me Monday. And I believe around episode 74, I have a scarf, a lacy scarf. And I swear, maybe some of you who have been watching me from the beginning, that I also did a woven or a waffle stitch Tunisian Kleenex holder, but I cannot find it anywhere. So maybe it's there. All right, that is it for me this week. If you 
have any questions that you'd like me to answer live next week, uh, please post them in the comments section. And they can be on anything from, uh, my hair is a hot mess right now, anything from business to, um, you know, crafts, ofs, um, life balance, parenting, whatever. Whatever. I'm here. I'm an open book. Let me know. And I might an uh, answer them back. I will be um, back here for Ask Me Monday next Monday, the 12th. We are going to be talking about a lacy herringbone knit stitch. I might throw in a crochet stitch too. We'll see how time goes. Um, just kind of for those last summer projects, really lacy and open and beautiful. So again, that's Noon Central live on Facebook. Um, you can always watch the replay later on YouTube or later on Facebook as well. Um, but I will be also back here on Facebook this week on the 8th for the next Yarnier unboxing. Yarnier August. Really excited about it. Um, unboxing will be on the 8th. Um, so please tune in. All right, that is all that I have for this week. Thank you once again for starting your week out creatively with me. Don't forget to check this out. Well, I mean, you can't, but you could pre-order it if you wanted. Or, oh, I know what I was to say. If you wanted to wait and get a signed copy, I will be doing some events. We're booking them now. I'm definitely going to be at Rhinebeck um, speaking. I'm trying to do some LA and Northern California events. I'm not sure. I'm definitely doing Club Cummings in, uh, in the Lower East Side in Manhattan. And I'm working on, you know, a couple other. If you have a place some place that you think it might be cool for me to check out. I especially like kind of maybe different events that you wouldn't think of. Um, please let me know or let your let your place know and have them reach out. Um, okay, that's all I got. Mwah. Have a great creative week.